What's up, shrimpers? As you know, it's almost time for spot shrimp season, and that means we gotta get serious about your gear, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know to get quick limits with spot shrimp, which I think are some of the tastiest critters you can pull out of our beautiful PNW waters. She's got it. Mm, so oh, good. Yeah. I told you. What's it taste like? Sweet. Tastes like shrimp. Yeah. <laughs> One of the most important things when it comes to spot shrimp is your shrimp pots, your gear. And we're going to get serious about that. I'm going to go over pot rigging. We're going to talk bait. We're going to talk strategy and competitive shrimp <laughs> openers. We're going to equip you with everything you need to get it done. Let's start with the shrimp pot type, okay? There's a few different styles out there. And we're, we're just going to cover the fast fishing pots. Uh, as opposed to the, the Ladner style, slower fishing pots. Because we're all about shrimping in places like Puget Sound, straight inland waters, where we're trying, we're trying to pull our pots and get limits in a very short window. We're not leaving them overnight. And so that's a kind of a different style of shrimping that happens more in Canada and Alaska. And we're gonna, but we're gonna cover the fast fishing pots. All right, so here we go. So there's, these are, this is a, this is the first shrimp pots I bought these square pots from SMI and I've got a couple of them here and these these are fantastic pots are a little bit on the cheaper side you can see they've got uh, you know th this we count these as the tunnels right so you've got one two three four five six tunnels on each side so that's a total of 24 tunnels you got the bait tunnel here in the middle and then there's also this round pot style uh, also from SMI, also has, you know, four, has four tunnels, larger tunnels on each side, you know, lots of capacity for bait. And we'll talk about why that's super important here. And then lastly, the, my more, most recent pot acquisition is this uh, McKay shrimp pot, McKay crab and shrimp gear, uh, right on a hood canal, makes fantastic stuff. So does SMI, but this is an even larger uh, pot here this octagon style and it has you know uh, six big tunnels on each side tons of capacity for bait in the middle tons of space uh, for your shrimp so you can think about how how much shrimp you can pull up in one pot is really about the distance between the, the tunnel here where shrimp can come in and the bait in the middle and so this, this allows a lot of shrimp to come in the pot, hang out in your pot uh, for a long time in that maybe 45 minutes to an hour and 15 before you pull it. So we want to get limits as fast as possible. One of the super obvious things that's really important for successful shrimping is you'll notice all my pots have, uh, have weight in them. They have some kind of weight strategy. You know, I started out with uh, grabbing the old dumbbell weights and just zip tying them on, tying them any way I could get them on, right? I also bought, I also bought weights from, uh, from SMI. They make shrimp pot weights, right? These coated weights. Uh, the, the only problem is these are super expensive. Oh my goodness, so freaking expensive. One of the things that's really important when you're shrimping is being able to uh, retrieve your pots, right? So if you, if your pots, you know, slide down the hill on the slope, well, that, that's that shrimp you're not gonna catch and that's a lot of expensive gear you've lost and you've created a hazard for someone else's gear down there in the future. So really important to weight your shrimp pots so that you can retrieve them. The other thing is weighted pots are stiller pots on the bottom and still pots catch more shrimp. You know, you're, if you're, you're shrimp, you don't want your dinner bouncing up and down. You're not gonna go into a pot that's moving around because you know, you've got boat turbulence up on the surface, which is, which we'll talk about how to rig it to kind of minimize that, right? Where, where, where now your, your, your buoy system is, is potentially moving your pot around and it's bouncing around. We don't want that, any of that stuff. So we want a still pot properly weighted that we can retrieve and get shrimp into the boat and off the water. The other thing I'll do is as these uh, as these weights will really um will really rust over time is I'll I'll use a plastic dip and cover them with that, give them a fresh coating. Usually every season to keep them from corroding. But this is probably my favorite weight system uh, that I've used. Right, so I get the cheapest cheapest thing you can do is you get 
it, you know, you get these bricks from Home Depot, Lowe's, wherever, <clears throat> wherever you get your, your landscaping supplies and you get enough bricks to weight the pot and then you, you just buy a, a, a masonry bit, right? And you just drill, you drill a hole in the middle of the brick with that and, and then you just throw your zip ties on there and <laughs> it costs like, a, I don't know, $10 for the whole setup, maybe $15 when you include the bit, right? I mean, compared to, you know, these, these SMI weights here, I mean, these things are, I don't know, what, $40, $50 uh, for, a, for a 10 pound weight? I mean, that's just, that's insane. You end, up, you end up spending more on your weight than you do on your pot if you're trying to weight properly. I want my, I want my total pot weight to be around 30 pounds or more and you should consider more when you're when you're shrimping in places like the Strait or the San Juans, where uh, you, there's a longer season and you have to pick the right tide and the current's really moving uh, at different times. Versus, you know, typically in Puget Sound, you know, the, or Hood Canal, there's 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 smaller water movement tides. Although in 2023, watch out, right? Some of these this opener is it's got some serious water movement, so you need to really have weight on your pot you need to have your pots anchored we're going to talk about that all right so let's talk about how we get the pot connected to our line and anchoring and buoy and all that stuff right so on all my pots i have the same hardware so i've got this i've got this four point harness right connects on each each end here and uh you know at the at the top here on this ring i put a stainless steel quick connect right because i want to attach that to this wonderful SMI produced gear called a C-Link, right? You look real close, there's a slight gap. And that gap is enough to be able to do this. This is my shrimping line, right? The, the other end of my shrimping line. And I can, I can do this. Bam. This is not gonna come out. This is not gonna come undone, right? And, but when I am disconnecting everything and keeping everything uh, segmented, uh, segmented so it's easier for storage and gear management, which is super important when you're out shrimping. I can just do this and we're free, right? Oh my goodness, these things are so good. These ceilings, these are awesome. All right, so this thing, so we've got our line connected. Very important to do before you toss your pot overboard, right? Make sure it's connected to your shrimping line. <clears throat> then we've got some line here and what I'll do with my line as you'll see in these videos that I show you here of me actually shrimping. So I've got, this is my pot anchor system, right? So it's about, I don't know, uh, eight feet of, of lead core line that is uh, detached from my main shrimping line here, right? And just one of these, uh, these, these uh, clips here. And what I do is I'll throw my pot overboard, uh, connected to the shrimping line, obviously I'll let about uh, maybe 20 feet go uh, go go down and then I'll just I'm just gonna clip this on right here right here because what happens then is this anchor is gonna deploy and this anchor is gonna deploy and it's gonna it's gonna grab a hold of of the the, the slope that I'm on that I'm tripping on and it's just gonna it's gonna dig in it's gonna dig in and it's gonna help it's gonna help keep the pot steady because again one of the things we don't want one of the things we don't want is we don't want our shrimp pots to be to be bouncing or moving, right? So that that pot anchor, I've got one for each pot, and it's going to help keep that from from happening. All my shrimp lines, I got 400 feet per per pot, are on this wonderful <laughs> garden hose reel that I purchased, and then and and it, and it fits on it fits on my you know. You've seen my shrimp uh, shrimp line management system. Now you can also buy the SMI version of this. They make they make um, you know a, a coiler like this for shrimp line management. Highly recommend doing something like that. Make your own. Go buy the SMI one, whatever. But like have a system of shrimp line management. I can fit two 400 foot coils of lead core line. Don't use non lead core line. You don't want floating line out there tangling in people's props another way you won't get your pots back right if, if that happens all right at the other end of this line on the coil is another ceiling at the, at the end of this is a ceiling which attaches to the other ceiling that's on this on this hose reel right because i have two 400 feet shots of of lead core line on this hose reel and on my buoy system that's going to connect right here 
I could have used a quick link on the other end of, of my line, but I want it to connect to the other rope. So uh, it's really easy to slide this over uh, a C-Link as well. And now we're connected to our uh, buoy stick, double yellow buoy system. And I've got this additional line coming off of the buoy stick. And this connects to what I like to call the insurance buoy. So this is the insurance buoy. And what that is, is uh, I don't want more flotation on my pot to potentially uh, move it around. So I want another, I want another flotation system that I can use to uh, keep my, if, if someone, let's say someone uh, pulls my pot under with while they're retrieving their pot or something happens where my pot gets sucked under, you know, that insurance buoy sometimes is the only thing sticking out of the water helps me retrieve my my um, my pot. So that actually happened to me on one of these busy openers and the only reason I was able to get my pot back, finish my limited shrimp, is the insurance buoy. So super important part of the system. Uh, gotta have some insurance, right? <clears throat> All right, now the last part of the buoy system here, super important, is some kind of identification marker. We use different colors. Part of this is sometimes your pots are in close proximity to each other and you and your management system, you want to be able to record, okay, we dropped the red pot at 9.05, right? And so we're like, oh, we got all our pots down. Uh, which one did we drop first? Was it the red, the yellow, it, right? But in our system, we have we have recording of that. We know where, we can see which ones are our pot, you know, out of the, there, there will be hundreds of pots out there, sometimes in the, a very close area. And you want to be able to, you want to be able to identify your pot from a distance, not like, get up close to it and like read the address on the buoy. By that time, you've wasted a lot of time. You want to be able to spot it from a distance. So having some kind of identification system uh, that, because that, everyone's going to have double yellow buoy sticks, uh, you know, that's that's going to be out there. But you want something that you can see and go, oh, that's my pot from a distance. And only motor up close to it and and prepare to, to, to do some pot retrieval. All right, now we need to talk about bait. One of the things about bait that heavily intersects with the topic of, of, of your of your shrimp pots is these is your bait barrel right these bait barrels are have a mesh that allow you know the right amount of bait to ooze through and we'll talk about what's what goes into bait but it's one of the things why I like one of the reasons why I like the larger larger pots is you have larger capacity for bait right you see the size of that bait barrel versus versus the one I was just holding. And you know, when you have more, when you have greater capacity for bait, now you, you, know, you have more bait milking out, oozing out, drawing shrimp into your pot. They can, you know, the, the, the bait can last longer, right? So, so now, you're, now you're, your pots, if, if they need to go an hour, hour and 15, hour and 30, you know, you're not running out of bait milking out of your pot. So having greater capacity for shrimp, in a larger pot, greater capacity for uh, for bait. One of the most important things with bait is that the viscosity of your bait matches the current conditions that you're encountering while shrimping. What do I mean by that? If you have less current, well, your bait needs to be runnier. If you have more current, then it needs to be a little more viscous, stick together a little bit better, and there's different bait ingredients that have different properties that you can uh, achieve that with. When you're shrimping, you want to have extra of all your different bait ingredients so that you can adjust on the fly. Because that first pot pull comes up and you might be like, oh man, where uh, most of my bait's gone or it barely milked out at all. Well, now you've got to adjust or you're going to have subpar shrimping performance for the rest of the time you're out there. Also keep in mind, in a four hour opener, the current changes, right? The 2023 opener that we're looking at, it starts out really slow and then the current picks up over time. And so you might have to adjust your bait mixture as you're shrimping. So you wanna have extra ingredients so you can adjust it on the fly. You also wanna be making your bait prep at least 24 hours ahead, more like 48 hours. Keep it in a cooler or something, keep it cool, but make sure that thing is ready to go when it's time to drop the pot. So I'm talking a little bit about bait, bait ingredients. It starts with good shrimp pellets, right? That's like the your your building block towards your your shrimp bait. 
And after that, I, I throw in mackerel. I like to get canned mackerel. I'm also trying some frozen ground up mackerel this year from raised bait. And the mackerel tends to be on the runnier side. It tends to disperse more quickly uh, or any chopped up fish in that sort of vein. All right, now the third ingredient to my bait mix is the the, the cat food, the, the, the wet cat food. And that tends to act as kind of like a coagulant, kind of keeps everything sticky together. And I'll add more of that if I need it to be more viscous and, and, and milk out more slowly. I'll also include, and I'll add like, you know, the crab and shrimp oil and bloody tuna oil and all, all kinds of different stuff to kind of sauce it up, right? And shout out to John Sporting Goods who, you know, introduced me to this whole bait mix to begin with and the way he does it. So he's got a great site and great material out there on shrimping and everything else you like to do in the uh, on the water. So when your pot comes back up in that 45 minute soak, hour soak, or whatever, you wanna look at how much bait is left and you want a third to a half of your bait left in your canisters. Less than that, you gotta slow it down. It's running out too fast. More than that, you gotta speed it up. We need, we need, that, built, we need that bait milking out to attract the shrimp to our pot. Uh, I wanna give you some ideas of how to find the right uh, habitat on your charts that spot shrimp uh, can be found in in great abundance. Uh, I'm gonna look at some stuff in Puget Sound to uh, really help us figure that out. All right, so let's start in the South Sound. Uh, this is Tramp Harbor on the northern side, uh, eastern side of Vashon Island. Look at this right here. I like this spot right here where this slope, it's just kind of like this indent in the chart, indicating to me that the current's gonna be a little bit broken up. It's kind of a hole uh, that gives these um, spot shrimp a little bit of protection. So I'm liking the way that this slope looks right here. You see it goes down to 300 feet. Another spot on Vashon Island we can talk about is um, it's, a, it's a classic here, which is Dolphin Point here on the northeast side. And uh, all this water here, these slopes here, they go from, uh, let's see here, they go from 200, 100, they go down to 270, 300, 325, all this, all this, see this? All this is gonna be productive, good shrimping. We've got a ton of shrimp there. Um, but last year, uh, Bainbridge Island also did really well. Let's take a look at another little harbor area here um, on Bainbridge Island. Zoom out a little bit, here we go. So here, there's uh, Blakely Rock, right? Now look at this little spot right here. 270, 280, 300. You know, I'm liking this, I'm liking this slope here. Uh, on the south side of uh, side of Bainbridge. There's a lot of this uh, along Bainbridge Island. It's ideal slopes here uh, that look like they could, look at this little spot here, this little indent here, this little slope, 250, right? 290, 300. I don't know, I'm, I'm, liking, I'm liking these spots. On the North Sound, tons of people will be out shrimping. Uh, there's some classic spots here as well. I mean, look at this off of Richmond Beach here. Look at this. 250, 300, 350 of these slopes. Perfect, ideal spots there. Uh, and of course, uh, one of the one of the um, well-known spots here is gonna be Browns Bay. Look at Browns Bay right here. Nice, little protected. Some of these areas, North Sound, towards as you get towards Possession Sound, you get these currents that counter each other. And so on certain currents, you can have a lot of low, low amounts of water moving <clears throat> and uh, and I'm liking these spots uh, for shrimping that put a lot of uh, shrimp in people's pots here in the North Sound, Possession Sound, area 81829, uh, all good spots. If you're going to the straight, you gotta use more weight. There's gonna be more current in the straight and you gotta watch that. Some spots, if you're going out of John Wayne Marina, you know, uh, a lot of these spots here, uh, you gotta watch it. This is big water. We'll make sure you got weather on your in your favor. But uh, you know, some of these spots here, look at this, look at these slopes here, down to 300, these little drop offs right here. That'll put shrimp in your pot. Uh, these spots right here, these little slopes, look at this. 300, go 100 down to 350. Um, good little spots there. Uh, Dallas Bank, if you can get in the middle of the street, Eastern Bank uh, has uh, put some shrimp out for sure. Look at this, 200 down to 300 on the southeast corner. Right there, that's a spot. There's a lot of spots. Uh, in the San Juan Islands, there's a lot of spots. Yeah, you can just follow everyone where the yellow buoys are. Learn the habitat, learn how to study the charts, figure out where the shrimp like to hold, and plan your trip around that. Maybe go out, venture out a little bit, 
um, beyond where you've been before and see if you can't uh, get those easy limits of spot shrimp. Tastiest critters uh, in Puget Sound, I think. Um, All right, one of the common questions is, what does shrimp look like on your sonar? Should you mark shrimp on your sonar before dropping your pot? And ideally, I would say the answer to that question is yes, and they look like this kind of fuzz, maybe even a less than what's showing in this picture, just like a barely kind of this like, like this fuzz on the bottom, right? It's, the, the, sometimes it's barely perceptible. The challenge with that is sometimes the shrimp are hunkered down on the bottom and, and, and won't mark at all. I've pulled massive amounts of shrimp in places where nothing was on the sonar. And I've also been fooled where I'm like, oh man, that's a big cloud of shrimp. I'm gonna drop my pot right there. And, and then no shrimp comes up. I'm like, man, I got fooled. What was that on the sonar that I thought was a big cloud of shrimp? So the bottom line is you gotta know the habitat that, that shrimp are, go are going to be found in and if you mark them on your sonar and you're pretty sure those are shrimp, like, like that's great confirmation, but it really starts with knowing, like we showed earlier, the locations and the habitat to, to, to be confident about where you're dropping your pot. What, what depth to drop your pots at? Man, that is that can be a tough one. It can change from year to year, from spot to spot. Sometimes you'll be finding them in 200 feet of water or even less than that. Last year in 2022, they were they were shallower. They were sometimes at 150 feet of water in places where we would typically find them in 250. Sometimes you'll find them at 300, 310. Sometimes the place where you'd like to drop are all clogged up with other pots and you need to pick at the edges and some other depths. So it, you gotta be flexible when it comes to depth. You gotta realize that they might not be where they were last year. And one of the ways you can adjust is you can vary your depth in that initial pot drop. Let's let's get it dialed in. Let's 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 drop in several different depths so we can kind of you know figure it out and, and then really triangulate, dial it in on the next pot drop to, to, to limit and, and, and get off the water early. All right, we, we gotta talk about pot placement strategy. There's a lot in here in regards to knowing what the currents are doing, knowing what other pots are doing, and in and, and, and competitive openers, getting your pots down around other people's pots is super important to do that correctly, to not tangle with their pots, right? And, and so we're gonna talk about a bunch about that and there's there's several things to cover. Look at which direction it's going out. Look, it's only going in, which, in one direction, which fortunately for the, this footage, it's like I'm right at the camera, right? So which direction is your bait gonna go when you drop your pot? It's gonna go uh, with the current, right? So in this case, we had a flood current and the flood current was taking my bait uh, north along north and in close into shore right that's what flood current does and and up north <clears throat> along this ridge and so as you can imagine the shrimp are going to come in the pot from the direction the bait is going that's the only way they're going to find your pot right is 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 by following your scent trail. Now this is also why in high current situations you don't get a lot of shrimp in your pot because <clears throat> the shrimp are having to fight the current to get into your pot, which they're not going to do if the current is very strong. So the best case scenario, really the best if you if you get to choose when you drop and where you drop uh, versus like our 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. openings <clears throat> is if you've got a current that is slowing down, right? So it starts out milking out in one direction, let's say on an ebb tide, it's going into deeper water. And then the shrimp are gonna, as the current slows down, are gonna follow that 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 bait trail into your pot in, in massive numbers, right? Right as that current's changing. Well, you know, in these 9 a.m. openers, you, you drop at 9 a.m., you, you, you do what you gotta do. In, in, in really competitive spaces where you're trying to compete for who can get their pots down, <clears throat> you know, in the, in, in the best locations, the fastest, knowing whether you're in a flood or an ebb tide and which direction your scent trail is gonna go might determine whether you drop in 310 feet or 250 feet, right? If the ideal shrimp depth is 270 to 290, you may wanna pick off the edges of where the shrimp are at based on which direction the current's going. If it's an ebb current, you want your pots to be a little shallower, maybe that 250, 260 depth, uh, because that, that scent is gonna, if most of the shrimp are holding 270 to 290, your bait trail is gonna go right to them and they're gonna follow that bait trail up into your pot. Conversely, if you have a flood current, right, you might wanna be a little deeper because you want you want that your bait to be, be headed towards the shrimp, maybe up the slope, et cetera, a little bit deeper. So all of this factors in, you know, to, to having great results shrimping, having good bait, 
knowing which direction your bait's gonna go out of, dropping in the right spot, all of these things are, are, are related. All right, so you can see I'm looking over at this white boat, right? I mean, they're kind of dropping in the same area I am, and I wanna make sure I'm not dropping too close to their pots. I wanna make sure there's enough space. I'm also trying to get my pots down uh, ahead of them so I can get uh, to the, the, the shrimping line I want. I want all my pots I'm about, you know, 75 to 100 yards apart in a, in a line in the best spots. Um, but you can't always do that. And like we talked about earlier, knowing which direction your bait's gonna milk out on a flood or an ebb helps you decide where to pick off maybe the edges if you can't get the optimal spot. But you also gotta pay attention to what way the current's going to know whether you're dropping a pot on top of someone else's pot, even if you look like you're away from their buoy. All right, so let's talk about that. Where is it okay to drop a pot in relation to where you see a buoy? Look at this picture. Visualize this picture as if it was like part of what you're looking at in one of those competitive shrimp openers. Where is it okay for this boat to drop their next pot? There's buoys everywhere, right? Pause the video, try to decide for yourself. Where is it okay to drop that pot? And then take a look at this next picture coming up right here. This is gonna show you where it's okay. The green smiley face, where it's okay. The red X is where it's not. Why? Well, the flood current is going to tell you that the buoys are going to be a little bit distance from the pot. So many people think that if they drop their pot away from someone else's buoy that they're picking the right spot to drop, and that is not the case. You know, you, you've got to know the current, how it's acting on those buoys to decide where to drop your next pot. It's super, super important. Take a look at this picture. This reveals where the pots are in relation to the buoys and why there's red X's on those spots where it would have been bad to drop. Sometimes dropping your pot right near someone else's buoy is actually the best place and give you the most separation and distance between their pot uh, and your pot. So it's, but you gotta know what the current's doing. You get the idea. All right, summing it up, you know, I know this is a lot of a lot of knowledge. If you're a first-time shrimper, thinking about get, going out and doing it for the first time, don't be intimidated. Get on the water. It, you know, usually great people out there. You know, having a good time. The most important thing is get on the water this year. Give it a try, even if you only got one or two pots. Like, give it a try. You're gonna you're gonna make some mistakes. That's okay. That's part of the learning process. Come back and watch the video again and refresh. And there's more openers. It's not just the first one. So, uh, you know, a couple of things you should know. Know the regulations. Go look them up. I'm not gonna try to show them all here because they could change from year to year. But go read the regulations. WFW closely monitors this this fishery and so you want to be following the rules there's not a ton of them but you got to know you got to know what you're doing out there when it comes to to, to the rules and the regulations you also got to show up to the boat launch early don't think you can if it's a 9 a.m opener and you're going to show up at eight o'clock you're probably going to be late in certain places the launch is like is backed up like an hour hour and a half so you got to show up early got to get up early it's worth it get on the water have all your stuff dialed in right you spend that extra time scouting around looking looking for shrimp on the sonar seeing what other boats are doing out there you know get any last minute adjustments to your bait like get get putting it in the canisters you know you're you have breakfast on the water you know with your crew that that's an awesome thing to do too if you you know you find yourself with some extra time but get on the water early give yourself lots of time don't rush it have fun out there. If you like this video, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more content coming and uh, I'll see some of you on the water. Oh my God. That was done. High five. <laughs> yeah.